start with a couple of questions about just the state of entrepreneurship, your journey here. You know, one of the things is, you know, entrepreneurship is all about wealth creation. Can India dream big? How do we dream big? I'm inspired by, say, Nelson Mandela, big dream. But I never think of that as a way of life for me, that it's too big shoes to fill, right? So we can't make big dreams feel like big shoes. Right. And one of the things that's happening here today, but I'll talk about in the Valley when I was an entrepreneur, two things I thought was fantastic. One was you had people that inspired you, but also you had people that made it seem very accessible. I can do it. They did it. It's not that hard. And, you know, the steps are broken down and I can do it. So I think for big dreams to happen, dreams must be, feel accessible. Yeah. And the other question is, you know, as we, you know, have the entrepreneurship happen, the wealth creation happens, how can we make sure that it's distributed well as well instead of just a smaller population becoming richer? What are some of the things we can do for better distribution? You know, um, I think since 2006, I have probably been involved in uh, about 50 companies in funding. And uh, there's an evolving mindset. And I think we are talking this specific to India. We are not talking this in a broader global context where different uh, geographies have its own dynamics. But in the context of India, I think we came from a notion of a manager, a corporate, a promoter, and not around uh, maybe employment creation, and you feel good, I created employment for so many people, but not that I created wealth for so many people. That hasn't been the moniker by which we define what a great leader, right? right. Whereas if you look in the valley or any company, the moment it goes public, what is it that people look at? You know, Alibaba created, you know, thousand millionaires in Hanshaw or, you know, in Redmond or uh, even Infosys is the only company that's talked in that context to date. I do believe it is changing in India. And to me, the metaphor I think about in this when I talk to my entrepreneurs, you see, I, I like to cook, especially when people come home. But do you cook for yourself? Anybody who cooks never thinks about it like that, right? You cook so others can enjoy, right? So if you're building a company, you're creating wealth, you have to say, I want to share it, like sharing a meal. And that's where the real fun comes from, right? And if we make that the metaphor, then that becomes what we see more and more happening. And, um, uh, you know, we are not going to talk about policy here and so forth. Actually, in India, even to offer ESOPs is very, very difficult. Even the New Companies Act makes it very hard to provide stock options in your company, which is the bread and butter of every startup in the valley, right? Yeah. So there are some things we need to work both from a policy, but also from a philosophy to make yeah. it happen. And I think you almost answered my last question is that, is India ready for uh, turning these dreams uh, into reality? What are some, you know, we've recently listed as one of the bottom countries to, for ease of business uh, in India. So what do you wish one or two things that happen here so the number changes? So, you know, India is today, if you look ahead 10 years, um, certainly I believe if you look 30 years, we will be a larger GDP than uh, China. Even if you look uh, 10 years ahead, what is happening from innovation and capital access to India has never really happened um, to date, right? So uh, it's creating these ecosystems and it has taken maybe a decade to make that happen. The next decade is really much more acceleration on yeah. tech and uh, uh, you know, uh, mobile solutions that will impact every sector. Great. So thank you very much.